a couple things you're going to need when you're sprouting. Who, there's a couple people in here who never sprouted a day in their lives, right? So you're brand new at this. So this could be fun. Okay. All right. You're, a couple things you're going to need to get started. Um, I always get two pitchers and get pitch, get, take one pitcher and drill holes in the bottom. Either that or a strainer. That'll work too. You keep this as simple as you possibly can. The reason why I put um, two pitchers together, there's actually a couple of reasons, but the cool thing is when you soak your seed, you can drain it pretty quick. And then you can rinse it out and it works really good. And then when I actually water, you can use that to water too. So it's kind of a neat little trick. Um, and when I get into the easy sprouter, you'll say it's pretty much the same idea as this. I had somebody come to me and said, Sean, you need to patent that thing quick. I said, they already did. It's called the easy sprouter. <laughs> Guy's brilliant. <laughs> um, so you're going to need some trays. And you, again, when you're at home, you can use anything. To, it, the, rule number one, if it grows, you did good. You, you can grow them in pots. You can grow them in pans. If you have anything at home, take out. Those little takeout trays mm -hmm. work fantastic. So you can poke little holes in the bottom of those. Those things work good, too. Um, I use trays just because I know what the measurements are for the seeds and stuff. So it's real easy to tell you how much seed you need and everything. And all the information is pretty much in here, so you can just watch me and figure it out from there. OK, so the first thing I did was I want to prepare my seeds. And I always tell people, get the best organic seed you possibly can. I know we have the best because it grows, as you can see. And we don't have any problems, and it works out very well. Um, we'll start with wheatgrass. So right before you go to bed, everybody can do this. I'm going to ask you if you can do this after this. Right before you go to bed, you're going to get your seed, and you're going to pour out one cup. This is hard red winter wheat seed for, for wheatgrass, OK? So you got one cup of seed, right? You're going to pour it in your pitcher. Remember, you have your pitcher with, with holes in the top and the pitcher with no holes on the bottom, obviously, because it's going to catch the water. <laughs> you take your seed and you pour it in the top, like so. Go to bed. That's it. You guys are done. You can go home now. It's good. <laughs> so you go to, go to bed. You go to sleep. So you do it right before you go to sleep. Pour it in there. Fill it all the way to the top with water, because it will expand by soaking up the water. All the way to the top of the water and then go to bed. When you wake up in the morning, this is the fun part. If this was a sink, which you know, I wish it was, and rinse it out. Is this all with distilled water? Yeah, distilled water is the best to use. Um, but you know, if you don't have distilled water, any water will do. Um, the reason uh, you want to stay away from tap water, basically, it has fluorides in it and things like that. But, you know, somebody asked me, what's the best water to use? I said, any water you have is good. <laughs> okay, so you just soaked your seed overnight. So everybody can do the first part? First part, soak your seed, prepare your seed. So your seed's ready to go, right? Okay, I'm going to put this over here. Reed is going to kill me. Okay, so pretend this was a sink and all the water is dripping down the sink. So she <laughs> Next thing you want to do is prepare your trays. Everybody see this? What's it called? Tray. Rectangle tray, right? <laughs> you have to be brain science for this. This stuff's great. Do you see any holes in it? No. What are we going to do with this? Catch water. That's what we're going to do. You're close, so you can do that. So you're going to put that down. That's what we're going to, you're going to use to catch water and catch any overflow and things like that. So keep your kitchen clean. It's always good. So you want to keep this right next to your sink. I should tell you that, too. I usually do this in my place. So I apologize. Maybe I'm making things up as I go here. Um, right next to your sink, you want to keep this next to your sink so you can pull off the water hose and water it. Put it back if you have one of those. Okay. So All right. So you have your tray with no holes in it. Then if you're growing for one person, this is what they call this, square tray. This is really hard stuff. And what's in it? Can you guys see the holes? Oh, yeah. Got holes. We're going to grow in this puppy. That's how we're going to do this. It's going to go right here. And then we're going to prepare the tray by getting your organic dirt. See it? You guys see how rich that is? That's what we grow in. So this is good stuff. Good juju. Okay, we put that in there. Um, maybe two scoops. You want to put about two inches of dirt in it. And you're going to shift it back and forth so it's nice and flat. Sometimes you'll get these little clumps in them. You just break them up. No big deal. 
And really, you guys can't screw this up. God does all the work. It's easy, trust me. Okay. So you see how it's nice and flat there? So that's about two inches of dirt. So it's about this much right here. Then we're going to take another tray and we're going to flatten it out. Now it's one inch of dirt. Everybody see that? Just like a farm, it's got little rows and everything. <laughs> Any? Everybody see? Okay. Can you do are you guys good so far? You can see, you can do this? Yeah. yeah, this is pretty easy. This is the fun part. Okay. All right, so you've got your tray ready to go. You soaked your seed overnight. This is what you do. I should back up. So right before you go to bed, you soak your seed. When you wake up in the morning, rinse your seed out really good, prepare your tray. This is going to take you two to five minutes. Seriously. So you have your seed that you soaked overnight, right? You got your coffee in one hand if you do coffee and you're sitting there like, I can do this, right? So you take this, sprinkle it all over the top. Okay. If you want to get your hands dirty, guys, it's good to get hands dirty. All good stuff. Now this seed will be three times bigger than the seed that you're seeing right now because it will be more sprouted. A lot of people tell you you have to sprout your seed before you put it on your dirt. Why? It will sprout in the dirt. Why take that extra step? So keep it simple. Everybody see that? Yep, just put it right on top. Okay, now we're going to trick it. Guys, remember this uh, pitcher here with the holes in it? This is fun my little watering can. Isn't that cool? Um, you want to soak it. Um, the reason why you want to soak it, you want the tray to drip. And that means you have enough water. So you can't screw this up. You can't overwater, you can't underwater. Well, you can underwater, but you'll know why quick. All right, so see how I did that? And you see the tray with the water? And you can just pour it out if you want. Or it will evaporate because it's usually just tiny a little bit. It's no big deal. So your tray is now soaked. It's all set up. It's ready to go. It's good to go. Everybody okay? Do you need to see that? Everybody with me so far? You're going to take another tray, put it over the top. So it's going to look like this. Okay? The reason why you do that is um, you want to keep the seeds moist so they don't dry out. It's also going to trick them like they're underground. So this will be the, the top part of the dirt. Um, if you're growing sunflower sprouts and pea ground. So if I was doing all this right now, I'd just keep doing the same thing that I just did for the wheatgrass and stack it right on top. So I'd have three trays stacked up on top with one tray on top. Any questions so far? Good? Everybody good? Yep. Every single one. Yep. Sunflower is going to get a little tricky later, and I did a great video with John Kohler showing you how to do sunflower. So definitely check that one out because that's a really good... Uh, Really good way to do it. Um, light there? No, indirect light. If you can see yourself in the room, you have enough light. So if you if you want to go crazy like the sunflower, sunflower likes like a couple hours of direct sunlight, but everything else is indirect light. It just it's I keep doing this because I got dirt all over my hands all day. <laughs> yeah. If you can see yourself in the room, it's enough. You can always add light too. Um, they make um, full spectrum lighting is what you want, and you can get small little little night lights so you can put right next to it. It's perfect. Um, so again, if I was growing sunflower, same step. Pour it in there, go to bed, wake up in the morning, take it out, pour it over the top, set the tray. P, same thing. So if I had three of them, I'd be doing the same thing and you'd have four or five trays stacked right here. Okay. Do they need light 24 hours a day? Or just when you're right now, they don't need any light because they're covered. Yeah. Yep. So for the first three days, you don't need any light. You can keep them in the closet if you want to. It's fine. And on the third day, he rose again, and this is what it looks like. Okay, and this is how, how, it, how it works. On the third day, you're going to water it every day. And this is probably good to show you. This is um, close to the third day. I think it's two and a half days or two days around there. You see how um, this is going to be totally yellow. It's already gotten green just from being here for an hour or two. So you can see how quickly it greens up. Um, you can see the seeds in there. Um, if I pull it out, you can see all the dirt in the root system. It's just starting. Kind of neat, huh? And it's like it's like a blanket. I had a guy last year at Apocrys that came to the costume party, and he made a wheatgrass suit out of canvas. 
and I got a great picture. It was going to be on my website. He had an H like this, and he's standing there like this. And it was canvas with wheatgrass growing out of it. It was cool. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. So, um, so that's the third day. This is what it will look like on the third day. See how you can actually see the grass through it? It's lifted it up so you can actually see it. Um, with sunflower, if you stood on this for three days, it will lift you up. That's how strong these little guys are. A good analogy of sprouts is, like I said, I don't know if I told you this one, but if we had this whole room full of adults and we let all these little two-year-olds run through, what would we all be saying? Gosh, I wish I had their energy, right? Yeah. That's what these things do. I mean, they're, they're loaded with energy. You can feel the heat coming off these things when they start sprouting. It's amazing. <laughs> I walk out and I go, oh, we've got to get the air conditioner down because it's getting too hot in here. Um, so that is how you do wheatgrass. So on the third day, this is the next step. So on the third day, it's going to lift this tray up. So you can actually see the grass. You want to take this off at that point, put it over here, and start green. Yeah, yeah, you want to spread them out at that time. So on the third day, on the third day, it'll lift up, even pea greens will lift up in three days. Sunflower you take up and you, and you turn this over for sunflower. So it starts, still so stays in the dark after three days. And then it'll lift that up and then you know, then green it. But I'll, I'll tell you about sunflower in a little bit. Um, so after three days, it's going to lift this up. You're going to take this tray. You're going to put it over here. What are you going to do now? Start the next batch. Soak your seed overnight. Start it in because this will be start growing. And then when this is cut, you have your next batch coming. And when this is cut, you have your next batch. You're rotating. You start your rotation. And the easy way to do it, um, I brought a huge rack down here, but you can have a tiny little two thing rack right here next to your sink. And go, okay, I got wheatgrass from three days, wheatgrass, brand new plant planting, sunflower, pea greens, everything's right there. When I started, I started in my kitchen. I was like, all right, I'm growing sprouts for everybody. So <laughs> I had six racks in my back patio. I had three racks in my bedroom. <laughs> it's nuts. It's, I'm, I'm crazy, what can I say? But I'm, I'm alive, so I'm happy. Um, when you plant it. Mm -hmm. When you, you prepare your seed, soak your seed overnight. When you wake up in the morning, you put it over the top. That's yeah, day one. Okay. That's day one. Um, but you don't even have to think about days because as soon as you can see that grass, take it off, start the next batch. It tells you when it's ready. It's, it's your, yeah, yep, very important. And this is step number three, wake and water. And I do this because you won't, you won't forget. As soon as you wake up, water. It takes two seconds. You saw how long it took me to water that tray. That's it. So wake and water every morning. And that's why I have a lot of customers that I teach how to sprout, and they come in over the weekends. I forgot the water. <laughs> Can I have a bag of wheatgrass get me through this week? Sure. Um, so you see how, th how that easy. It's, it starts your rotation. Three days, and then you start your next one. Three days, you start your next one. Three days, you start your next one. Um, this is after about five days. So this is what it looks like. Cool thing. You can see how the root system works here. Oh. So I can actually pick this up um, set without any dirt coming off, which is good. So it comes into like a nice little carpet. It's great for, um, for, for turf and things like that. And then you're on the, this is ready to cut here. And wheatgrass alone, you can figure out how to do that. It's called the jointing stage. And that is when the blade of grass, your main blade of grass starts getting a second blade coming off. That is the top of the nutritional value for wheatgrass when it starts doing something like this. It's called the jointing stage. I do it by sight now. I don't even have to look anymore. You see how this tray is straight up? You see how this tray is kind of going out a little bit? That's the day before the jointing stage. So I will cut that today because I want it at the top of the nutritional value for it. Um, depends on your growing conditions or where you are, where you live, but it's usually seven to 10 days. Me, I've got it down to about five or six days, just because I have grow lights and everything else going on, air conditioning and everything going on. Um, the best uh, uh, temperature to keep it at, you want to keep it between 70, 72 is optimum. You want to keep humidity under 80. Once it gets 80 humidity, you're going to start running into mold problems, um, no matter where. If you run into mold problems, what you can do is take a fan and aerate as much possible, or you can plant less. So instead of planting a whole cup, Plant a little less so, it's, so it gets more air in there, especially if you're in hot climates. Yeah. So if you, if you do a work in May, you turn it in your house, mm -hmm. and then you turn it in seven weeks, it's not going to No, it's not going to hurt. It'll grow faster because it's warmer. But um, if you get over 80, 
you may run into mold problems because it's it, and just just if you put a fan on, you're fine. A ceiling fan will be fine. If you have a small little fan, just put it indirectly on it so it doesn't you know dry it out. But yeah, yeah, you can keep it hotter hotter as long as it's keeping airflow through it. What happens when it sits in darkness and moisture it is good for mold. And to be honest with you, the mold that's in wheatgrass is the same mold we breathe all day long. If you cut the wheatgrass and you have a little bit of mold on there, take, rinse it off and cut that part off. You're fine. It's not going to kill you. The same stuff we breathe all day long. So. Um, the, um, the one serving that you did or the one, mm -hmm. that yep. would just be enough for one? Yes, this will give you one pound of grass. One pound will give you 10 to 12 ounces of juice. So if you're one person, it's going to give you about a week's worth. Six days on it. Yep, I, let me get that part here. Okay, so th you're at your stage right now where it's fully grown. This is right what they call the jointing stage. It's ready to go. You see how it's kind of coming off here? Mm -hmm. The day after the jointing stage, this thing will go, Pfft. it's a sprout. It's only good for a couple days. <laughs> so you want to get all the energy on there. So this is how you cut it. Ceramic knife. Don't use a metal knife. If that's all you have, then use it. But don't use a metal knife if, if you don't have to. The reason being is it oxidizes. When you cut the sprouts, it'll oxidize the tips, so you're going to get brown tips. I don't know if you've ever seen brown tips on any of your sprouts it's because people cut with metal knives. They did a really bad thing to me at the first time I attended a Tony Robbins event. We were the juice people for Tony Robbins' Life Wealth Mastery. 900 people at the first event. They said, all right, Sean, we've got to have 900 shots of wheatgrass ready by this time. So we're going crazy juicing. We've got juicers everywhere. Juicing it up. Get it all on the tray. A hotel guy walks in takes a pitcher of juice and pours it through a metal container and does the, the, the divvy it up, every single wheatgrass tasted like metal. It picks up metal like crazy. I don't know what it is, but it was like, ugh. I was like, geez. And the guy's, isn't that good? And I can see him going, isn't it great? <laughs> my head was like, I'm not doing this stuff. So yeah, that was my first, uh, we caught it the second day. <laughs> first day was a little scary, but that was their taste test. So this is how you do it. Usually I'll have gloves, but I'm not gonna bother. You're going to take it. Now, with a ceramic knife, be very, very careful. These things are extremely sharp, OK? So and <laughs> we have lots of accents. You're holding it like this with your thumb down. Make sure you keep your thumb up. So and you know what an easy way to do this is? Let's see if I can move this over here. It likes indirect light. So if you can see yourself in the room, that's enough light. If you want to green it up a little bit more, like this one's really green. It's really nice and pretty. OK, so you can take it out of the, the tray so you can actually see the root system, which is kind of neat. I usually use rubber gloves for this, but um, you want to take this. Can everybody see that OK? I'm going to grab it and then cut it as low as you can. You see how sharp these things are? And you can, you can imagine we go through probably 400 trays a day. We go through these knives probably once every six months. These things are sharp. <laughs> the first time you open one of these up, it's like, whew, that's it. Yeah, so they're really good knives. Um, so that's, this is just about what you need for two ounces of wheatgrass right here. You're probably maybe, maybe a little bit more. For, uh, depends on what your juicer is. But um, I have an angel, and you just put this thing in, and just whew, two ounces, perfect. Comes out dry. A great juicer. Um, OK, the store, let me just get the store in for you, too, as well. Anybody see these Debbie Meyer green bags? These things are fantastic. It lets the sprouts breathe, and it takes out the carbon dioxide and the oxygen that it gives off, so it, it, it keeps them dry. So these are really good to store them in. Um, once you cut, you're going to cut this entire tray when it's ready to go. Put them in the green bag. Put them in the refrigerator. They'll last seven to ten days in the fridge. So you'll go through them in six or seven. So you're 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 going to be fine with sprouts the whole week. So it's very simple. Yep. What if you had the ceramic uh, barber uh, clippers? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Scissors, clippers, anything, as long as ceramic. You don't want to do the metal because it, it, it makes it all brown. The next day, this would be all brown if I cut it with a metal knife. OK, so you want to take this. And what I usually do when, when we're, we're packaging for people, I'll have deli paper, and I'll just put a, a pound on the deli paper because it's easy to pick up and then slide it right into a, a Ziploc bag. Um, something, like, something like this. So I put it on deli paper and slide it right in. The reason why we package like this is because most of the chlorophyll is on the tips. So you want to protect the tips as the most pop. You'll find a lot of uh, wheatgrass companies 
pack it like that. You see how that gets mushed? Um, I like to store my <laughs> like this at home just because it's easier to pull out. <laughs> but the reason why we store them straight up is we want to protect the tips for the chlorophyll. So that's all you need to do. You can fill this bag, stick it in the refrigerator. Um, this will give you, because I did it on a larger tray. Remember I showed you the small tray? That's one pound. If I'm growing for two people, use a larger tray, the rectangle tray. And that'll do two people. And if you have a family of four, do two of those. You can see how this can get big really quick. Um, when I was sprouting, I was just sprouting for myself so I could stay in the kitchen, and then I was sprouting for Jody, and I was sprouting for my father-in-law, and then I was sprouting. <laughs> you can see how it can grow very quickly because you need two trays every time, one that's growing, one that's cut. So you're always rotating. So okay. with the sunflower or the pea? Yep. Is that okay? It's real simple. Um, in the same tray? No, uh, you can do it. Oh. Oh, no, 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 drink, drink it, juicing. Um, wheatgrass alone, that is nature's medicine. Um, chlorophyll is the greatest healer in everything. So keep that by itself. And again, you're only gonna do one to two ounces when you first start. So that way you can keep regulating that as well. The sunflower and pea you can drink all day long if you want to. That was my meal replacement, sunflower and pea, green celery and cucumber. That's what I ate and drank all day long. So I was just, I was juicing 64 ounces. <laughs> I was doing this. <laughs> But I'm here, so I'm happy. Yep. What do you do with that after you cut everything off? Um, this is what they call the pad. You can compost that. Um, I'm fortunate enough where I put it in the dumpster and behind, and the guy comes, picks it up, and takes it down and reconstitutes it. But yeah, um, I think I told you about my neighbors. Mm -hmm. If you compost, oh boy, yeah, no, it's got, it smells ten times worse than fish. It's not good. You put that out back on the lawn and will grow. It will. It will, oh, that's a good question, too. Um, Jamba juice. If you guys ever go get a shot of wheatgrass and Jamba juice, does it ever taste bitter? Mm -hmm. First thing I do when I go to Jamba juice, it says, can I see your tray? And they'll bring a tray out. If it looks like that, you know they cut it and regrew it. There's really no nutritional value if you regrow it in this. It so, nice yeah. Well, look good in the long here. Nice healthy lawn, but yeah, grow it once because that's when it's going to all the vitamins. And, so you can see um, when I'm done growing the wheatgrass, there's not a lot of dirt left. It eats all the dirt that's in the tray, so there's really no nutritional value when you regrow it. So and Jamba Juice, why it tastes bitter? Because they, either they regrew it, it's too old, they don't know when to harvest it, and they don't. I don't know if they train their people, so it's really you know hit and miss. I was at an airport and I got shot of wheatgrass and I was like ah. <laughs> And, and your taste will refine. You will start really noticing that, that oh, this was a good batch. This, was, this one needed to be next day, maybe. But that you, you'll really know. I can tell by taste of wheatgrass what day it is. I mean, it's, it's, you'll, you'll get this down, yeah.